All right, hello, citizens of the Nigerverse. It's Nigel once again, and this is gonna be another wrestling review. So we are finally kicking off our reviews for what happened over WrestleMania weekend, and and obviously, of course, with that, uh, the review for WrestleMania 40 will be out tomorrow. But before we got to WrestleMania 40, yeah, it was time to see what NXT was up to. Who, uh, as they, they came into Philadelphia and into the Wells Fargo Center, there was two objectives for our young, up-and-coming NXT talent to pull off, and that was to stand and to deliver. Did they do one or both? Let's find out. I'm, I'm of course, talking about NXT Stand and Deliver, so, uh, which took place on on, on uh, WrestleMania Saturday, hey, although WrestleMania wouldn't be till later on that night, so NXT Stand and Deliver uh, instead uh, took place earlier on in the day at around 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but, of course, as always, I'm not professional. not a professional wrestling viewer, analyst, or anything like that. Just a man who enjoys a good time. And I had a, a pretty decent time, I would say, with this uh, event. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get right into it. And a couple things before we begin, though. Uh, of course, if you've seen these reviews of mine before, you kind of know this works. If you haven't, I'm going to be talking about what I liked and disliked about the event. I'm going to go match by match. Um, there are a couple preliminaries uh, that we will uh, discuss as well. Uh, but... Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, I guess we'll start with the preliminaries. These are, or less preliminaries and more mid-show hilarious, because there's stuff that happened during the show that I definitely want to talk about. Some stuff I'm excited about, so, uh, for start harder, hers, uh, hers, uh, Julia made her appearance, and it looks like she is indeed going to be signing with WWE. Of course, uh, Julia, a huge, uh, star in, uh, in, uh, New New Japan, so, uh, uh, stardom, um, uh, yeah, yeah, she was, uh, she, she was actually far star, stardom, never mind, so, oh, uh, he, so, uh, oh, big star in, uh, start, stardom, and, and it had been rumored for some time that she would be making her way to, uh, WWE, and more specifically, the NXT brand, it, and she did make an appearance, uh, and, uh, that had been, uh, Rumors circulating for a while that she was uh, going to be set to make an appearance and and uh, or uh, uh, start working for the NXT brand and they do pr and they did pretty much what they do with all the new the signings uh, pointing them out in the crowd and everything and uh, so oh, and she was also it's also worth mentioning that she apparently was in attendance for WrestleMania 40 which obviously we'll, you know we'll get to tomorrow uh, not necessarily her appearance because we're getting out of the way now but. Um, but I uh, more so oh, talking about WrestleMania 40, that is. But uh, so oh, she uh, made an appearance here, here uh, within the crowd and everything. And uh, yesterday, uh, uh, not yesterday, but uh, her her um, but her appearance at WrestleMania 40 the next day. I'm sorry, I'm calling all over the place. But her appearance the next day uh, at a WrestleMania 40. Yeah, apparently she was listed as a performer, meaning she indeed has signed with WWE, and and now it looks like um, <clears throat> it looks like the news is breaking that she has signed. So, oh, uh, it looks like she's gonna be starting out in the NXT brand. So I'm excited. I'm um uh, not really familiar with her body of work, but uh, I am excited to see uh, what she he brings to the table. And I might and I probably definitely should go back and at least familiarize uh, myself with like uh, her style and everything and and her, uh, her uh, accomplishments, so I definitely will do that. But uh, the other thing is that we have a new championship added to uh, NXT. So, oh, is so uh, Ava, uh, the uh, NXT general manager, her, uh, her and, um, and of course, her, uh, I'm sure excited to watch her dad perform later on that night on WrestleMania Saturday. Again, we'll get to that. But uh, she unveiled a brand new championship, the the NXT the, uh, Women's North American Championship. Yep, so essentially like the Men's North American Championship, but now for the women. So NXT he, uh, is going to have its first uh, Women's Mid-Car Championship. And I think, I think that's a really cool idea. Now, a Women's Mid-Car Championship is something that's been... Um, people have been wanting to see in WWE. Uh, I know Rhea Ripley said she wanted to have a Women's Intercontinental Championship on the main roster. Or uh, at least I think it was Rhea Ripley who said she wanted a Women's Intercontinental Championship on the main roster. It's kind of like a mid-card title. And, uh, and now it looks like uh, at least the women of NXT are getting uh, a mid-card championship. If, uh, so who will be the inaugural champion? We will find out. Of. Uh, apparently there's going to be a tournament held to crown the inaugural champion. Uh uh, me, me personally, I am excited for it. Uh, it uh, 
it. And uh, my belief is that when it comes to like women's mid card championships, I'm not against. I'm definitely not against the idea. In fact, quite the opposite. I think it'd be really cool, but they have to know how to book it correctly. Like, like uh, do what they weren't able to do with the women's tag team championships. Like, actually have meaningful storylines with the championships and have the championships mean uh, something. Really, really have it mean something. And uh, if it, anybody can pull it off, it's definitely NXT. They have a really stacked women's division. A lot of women on uh, the roster. It gives. Um, it gives the women who you don't necessarily want to put in the uh, main NXT Women's Championship title picture. It gives them a championship uh, to fight for. So, oh, uh, I'm I'm definitely excited. Do I think it'd be cool for the main roster? Yes, but they, but like I said, they have to book it correctly and uh, make it work. And uh, so hopefully, hopefully, w hopefully, like the uh, I imagine in uh, the mid card championship, uh, the NXT Women's North American Championship, kind of that mid card title for NXT will kind of be the litmus test. And then if that goes well, if if that's booked correctly, if people are uh, are having warm reception to it, I imagine they'll bring up like a mid card championship to the uh, main roster. But the thing is. Also, I don't necessarily, like, hey, don't get me wrong, having a female Intercontinental Championship would be pretty cool, and, well, and, of course, or, uh, of course, uh, females aren't necessarily unfamiliar with, um, uh, with winning the Intercontinental Championship. Of course, China became the first, and I think so far the only, uh, women's, uh, uh female, I should say, female Intercontinental Champion. Uh, she won it from Jeff Jarrett, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but, uh, I, I see the Jeff Jarrett or Chris Jericho, but, um, but I, 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 while having a women's intercontinental championship would be cool, I kind of also want like a women's mid card championship to be its own thing and to have like its own name. Name, uh, name, uh, what name would you give it? I'm not entirely sure, but I, I kind of do. At least that that's kind of just a me thing. I would want it to be kind of its own thing. I don't necessarily want it to be just like the intercontinental championship. Uh, I mean, it, it would be like an intercontinental championship in terms terms of like being that mid card title but i don't necessarily want it to i don't i don't want it to be derivative of the intercontinental championship i think is what i'm saying or at least what i'm trying to say hey like i want it to be its own thing i want it to stand out on its own and hopefully uh they're able to do so but i mean if we got if if it is like a women's intercontinental championship i don't think people would be mad at it like people would probably be very hyped and we would get a white strap variant of the intercontinental championship which i think would look really cool but i also do kind of want to be its own thing uh, maybe i'm alone on that let me know what you guys think but hey yeah but i'm i'm excited but without further ado let's get into the show proper and how we're going and, uh to go in order of the match so uh the only exception being the pre-show uh, where joe gacy uh battled sean spears and uh, actually picked up the win which is kind of surprising and uh, i think in terms of my predictions i uh was i think i got most of them right i think i got one or two wrong the first one uh the uh, pre-show match i definitely got wrong Wrong, but uh yeah and as well as this one as braun breaker and baron corbin defended the nxt championships successfully against axiom and nathan fraser it's, it's kind of interesting considering braun breaker is supposed to be called up soon but i guess they're not entirely done with braun breaker and baron corbin as uh nxt tag team champions and and uh and hopefully they do keep them as a team. Like, hey, I do kind of want Baron Corbin to be called up as well and keep them as a team because they make a solid team. And man, Braun Breaker is impressive. Like, hey, hey, uh, this is uh, all, all four guys. I think did really well, but Braun Breaker especially. Like, like um, for your new up and coming main roster prospect, it's a really solid look, including in that uh, nasty Larry. He he hit on a. Uh, I believe it was uh, uh, Nathan Fraser he hit, uh, where he went from the ropes and just hit that incredible mock speed. That is that is a thing of you. Like, like uh, not only is it cool just to get that speed in general for the clothesline, but especially for someone of Braun Breaker's size. But, but uh, yeah, so some pretty interesting stuff there. So, oh, um, interesting that they didn't pop the tag titles on Max and Nathan Fraser, but I'm guessing or Nathan Fraser, but uh, like I said, perhaps uh, not quite done with them, uh, at least Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin as NXT Tag Team Champions, so uh, they pick up the win there, and uh, yeah, pretty solid match, but then next up, up uh, for, uh, for the North American Championship, uh, Obafemi defended against both Dijak and Josh Briggs, uh, so, oh, um, 
something that a lot of people noted, especially during WrestleMania, but also during this match, a lot of advertising all over the place. Like, this match essentially was sponsored by Knuckles, the upcoming uh, Paramount show, which I didn't even know existed up until uh, the match, and then I saw more, uh, a little bit more about the upcoming Knuckles show. So, I guess Knuckles is getting his own show. Oh, uh, oh, that being Knuckles the Echidna from the Sonic the Hedgehog uh, franchise. And, and I mean, I th it fits. It, it definitely fits. Knuckles is very, very strong, very powerful. Uh, uh, definitely kind of the muscle of Team Sonic. And I, I think it definitely works with these three guys. And as in these three guys put on a hell of a match. Like, like man, you be... He, um, like, Obafemi did really well. Oh, Josh Briggs did really well. And then Dijak, of course. Or, so you'd be hard-pressed to find a bad Dijak match. Like, like especially... Hey, now, uh, admittedly, he, I did miss, like, a good chunk of the show. I missed the tag team match, and then I missed, like, the opening part of the North American Championship match. Literally, when I came in, and is when they did the chair spot where her, uh, it was... As, uh, I believe it was Dijak in the chair, and then Josh Briggs launched Obafemi into... Who, uh... <clears throat> Well, launched him into who hijacks. Actually, that was really cool. Cool there, uh, and uh, all all uh, all three of these guys definitely brought it. Bring some agility and yeah, as well as that power. We, we might not have gotten the Bronson Reed meaty invitational that he wanted with it, man. And if, if that would have been something, we definitely got robbed. Between that and the canceled meat, uh, meat madness match at uh, uh, AW Revolution earlier this year, man, we've been robbed of our big meaty men smacking meats. But but uh, we but we got in spirit with this match because all three guys uh, showing off their power, showing off their agility just absolutely tearing the house down obafemi picking up the win and it really cool well how they did it uh obafemi absorbing a lot of punishment but uh, coming back including uh, i think like uh, three feast your eyes uh, from uh die jack like, it was cool after die jack nailed the feast your eyes on josh briggs eggs and then Going for the pin, and then Obafemi just it's hitting and just palming uh, Dijak's neck, going for or, uh, to lift him up. I thought that was really cool, and the camera angle, man. And now uh, I will also say this: I don't know where I'll have another opportunity to say this, but that, uh, the production quality and the camera quality has stepped up majorly after Kevin Dunn left, and that's something people have been pointing out for a while. But especially he with that moment, like that was a very cool shot, and then Obafemi power bombing. Uh, uh, Josh Briggs onto Dijak, uh, or actually Dijak on Josh Briggs and then uh, pinning Josh Briggs, which does make sense, you know. Oh, you, oh uh, if you're gonna power bomb somebody on top of somebody, you definitely want to power bomb the person. Uh, not power bomb. You definitely want to pin the person who got the worst of that. That being having somebody power bomb onto them. So Obafemi picking up the win. Obafemi, he he's so so impressive, and and it's even crazier to think how impressive he is. Yet he's not that much. Than me, he's, he's only got me by like a couple years. There's uh, not not even uh, about a year and some change, but uh, uh, man, uh, and uh, definitely impressive. Like, like they were saying a while back that Obafemi, he uh, they've been impressed by, he's definitely gonna do some big things, and he absolutely, absolutely is gonna do who some big things and be uh, super impressive, like, like, um. Like, his size, his agility, and everything like that is just absolutely awesome. And not to take anything away from the other two competitors, but especially with Femi. Man, just impressive stuff. So, yeah, congrats over Femi on the win. And, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, really solid match. Then next up in six women tag, tag, uh, tag uh, uh, Fallon Henley, Kalani Jordan, and Thea Hale, Hale uh, who, of course, are accompanied by Chase Yu, are, who uh, battle Izzy Dame, JC James, Hayne, and Kiana James. <laughs> Ames, uh, try saying those three names five times fast, but, but, um, but of course, uh, her, uh, Thea Hale and JC Jane and have been kind of beefing for a little bit. Uh, Fallon Henley and Kiana James have kind of been beefing for a little bit. It, uh, as well as Izzy Dame now getting involved. Also, I get as things convert. Uh, I guess things converging here, and of course, uh, Hale, Hale uh, Jordan, and and uh, Henley getting the win, and essentially he kind of to give if. Uh, Kind of to give Thea that win and to kind of put away JC Jane because that was like the main few going into it, and then the other uh, four women involved kind of uh, helped form the tag. But um, uh, but kind of give it a uh, kind of give it a layup there. Anyway, not not to say this is a bad match or anything. It's, it's still really solid, I think. But essentially to fulfill that feud, Thea and JC getting that uh, get hanging there. Uh, <clears throat> 
getting their hair moment in the ring, getting their interactions, and ultimately Thea Hale, Hell, uh, Hell, uh, with the, uh, I believe the Kimura, she locked on Izzy Dame, and Izzy Dame, I think, was the one who tapped, giving uh, Hale and company the win, and uh, so yeah, pretty solid match in that regard, and uh, and I imagine, I imagine these uh, six women, that being Henley, Jordan, Hale, and then uh, Dame, uh, Izzy Dame, JC Jane, Keanu James, I imagine, and uh, will probably be involved in. Uh, in the uh, uh, NXT Women's North American title picture going forward, but uh, yeah, so a uh, pretty solid win there. And and uh, it uh, as it does go to show, you can have women's feuds that don't involve the championships. As uh, you just got to book it right. I, I know. I, I believe it was. Um, I believe it might have been either Rhea or Becky who brought up how uh, they would like to see more uh, women's feuds that don't necessarily involve the championship. And I think and, uh, that would be pretty cool. Like, obviously, you know, championship feuds those are a thing, and, and championship feuds can be exciting. But uh, uh, sometimes times all you need in a feud is good old-fashioned personal pride. Uh, but uh, next uh, up, uh, up, speaking of personal pride, I'd, uh, I'd uh, uh, Roxanne Perez seeks to get hers back from Lyra Valkyria and take her NXT women's championship so Roxanne Perez as uh, has turned heel uh, is uh, calling herself like a uh, kind of doing the whole you know oh, I'm the uh, NXT women's champion uh, NXT women's champion because I technically never lost the belt which she did and it was vacated from her after she fainted after a match against Mako Satomura. Uh so uh, so Roxanne has essentially snapped turned heel and has been feuding with Lara Valkyria uh, and and a pretty solid match between the two. And also, oh, and I'll get more into it when I kind of kind of briefly touch upon the Raw after WrestleMania when I do my WrestleMania review tomorrow. Well, a lot of stuff, a lot of foreshadowing for tomorrow. Oh, because a lot of stuff did go down at WrestleMania and technically the Raw after WrestleMania. But, but uh, Ro Hoxhead, congrats to her uh, uh, making her main roster. N not necessarily main roster debut because she was in the Women's Royal Rumble match uh, for two years in a row. But all, but um, more so her Raw debut uh, battling Indy Hartwell. But, but uh, as for this match... Uh, Match uh, Roxanne and Perez and Lyra Valkyria uh, did really well. I'll definitely brought it to each other, and Roxanne Perez has ultimately uh, putting away Lyra Valkyria with the he hit the cross uh, space after her, uh, injuring the shoulder and everything. Excuse me. He, uh, after injuring Lyra's shoulder, or, uh, Roxanne Perez then locked to the cross face. Lyra taps, so Roxanne Perez is the new NXT Women's Champion. So congrats, so congrats to her. But then as we heard, uh, as uh, Lyra is recovering, and this is later on in the show, oh, uh, some tension uh, perhaps between her and Tatum Paxley. He, uh, where her, uh, Lyra seemed pretty upset, so I wonder uh, if that storyline is going anywhere, if they're going to be set to feud. But uh, next up, uh, up uh, for the NXT Championship, if uh, the Don, Tony D'Angelo, seeks to take the NXT Championship from the Mad Dragon, the Tsar himself, of a man who also uh, appeared on Raw uh, last night, Ilya Dragunov. Was he able to who take the NXT Championship from the Mad Dragon? Well, no, but I uh, still put up a pretty decent defense. So, oh, Tony D'Angelo, I I got a lot of this wrong. So, oh, Dragunov was never kidnapped, but uh, Tony kind of uh, trying to lead more fate, haste, haste on not wanting to use as much of his like underhanded tactics in order to put away Dragunov, wanting to put him away properly, including when uh, Stax handed. Uh, uh, Tony D'Angelo, the brass knocks, but Tony, he said, nope, he doesn't want to win that way. Hey, and also he cost him because, of course, Ilya Dragunov ultimately picking up the win against Tony D'Angelo. Uh, oh, uh, pretty solid showing for both men. And, and afterwards, you know, they shook hands and everything. And, uh, I was expecting Tony to turn, but I guess... Um, but I guess not. Maybe they'll milk the feud a little bit more, or who knows. But yeah, Tony, yeah, you might have wanted to cheat on that one uh, in order to pick up the win. But uh, uh, wanting to do it honorably, at least he, you know, lost honorably, at least in terms of storyline and stuff like that. And so Ilya Dragunov still the NXT champion, and uh, Tony D'Angelo well, unsuccessful, but still putting up a pretty decent performance. Uh, but then, and uh, last but certainly not least, in your main event and uh, and uh, history making main event. As tr as a uh, Carmelo Hayes he battles his former friend Trick Williams. So, oh, of course, first uh, history being made as as this is the first first uh, all black heck uh, heck uh, uh, main event in NXT history. He had uh, the 
first time two black men have fought in the main events of <clears throat> of an NXT uh, events, that being, of course, Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes, but also the second time, I'm, uh, at least he's uh, seeing from the wiki here, the second time uh, I'm at an NXT stand and deliver that a match in the main event wasn't for the championship. And the first, ironically, also involves somebody turning on someone, that being the unsanctioned match between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly at Stand and Deliver 2021. And uh, as for the, this match, uh, I think it was decent, but I also feel like it lacked something. Like, like, um, like definitely, he, uh, he, like the few who go into this is uh, we were talking about personal pride or, right earlier, and it definitely he, this one definitely he feels a lot. Definitely has a lot of that personal pride going on. Of course, uh, Trick Williams at one point and Carmelo Hayes at one point were friends. Then Trick kind of branched off his own, and Melo was not was none too pleased at that. So. So of course, uh, Carmel Hayes turned on Trick Williams after his NXT Championship match at uh, at Vengeance Day earlier this year, and they've been feuding ever since, and attacking each other at multiple points. Carmel Hayes even getting himself some security. So oh, a lot of feud, but I feel like the match, had, uh, I feel like the match kind of lacked that lacked that spice to really bring it to the next level. It's not a bad match. Like like uh, both Carmel Hayes and Trick Williams are talented enough to. Uh, to have a, a uh, solid match and trick uh, getting the win, proving he's more than just a sidekick. Hey, but I feel, feel like the match kind of lacked something. Like I think this one and and this won't be the last time I say this in the course of these kind of WrestleMania weekend uh, type of uh, reviews. Even more foreshadowing for tomorrow. But oh, uh, oh, so after the fourth bout of foreshadowing, you guys definitely gotta check out the video tomorrow. But I feel like this match would have benefited better if it was no holds barred. Like the feud between these two like getting so personal at, at least in terms of storyline uh but but uh getting so personal i feel like a hey, uh having a <clears throat> hey, no holds barred having them just go absolutely insane they did roll in the crowd a little bit it but like having that uh but uh, having that uh, but having that no holds barred feel, having that at uh, that street fight feel, well, I think would have benefited this match greatly. He uh, like hey, like I said, still putting on a decent match, but it was a bit disappointing. Like it definitely lacked something. It lacked that impact. But uh, Trick getting the win, and I think that was the biggest thing there. That was the end goal. But I, but I wish uh, I wish the match had a little bit more, a little bit more of that spice and that feel to it. Like this is the match that uh, a lot of people were looking forward to the most. Most, but I feel like it kind of maybe it's just me. Maybe maybe I'm alone on this, but I feel like it kind of it kind of underdelivered a little bit. It uh, it not a bad match, just a bit a bit on disappointing end, which is sad uh, with how much Bill went into this match. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. So the strongest and weakest match of the night. Uh, the strongest I definitely gotta go with the North American Championship match. Those guys absolutely brought in tore the house down. Um, uh, as for the weakest match of the night, I sadly. Uh, I sadly might have to go with the main events. Like, I, um, it's either that or the six woman tag. But I think, in, um, I think the main event had so much more build and had so much more promise to it. It and it kind of, at least for me, kind of fell flat a little bit. Like, like I said, it's not a bad match, but not as good as it could have or even should have been. So I think I might have to give that uh, for or the amount of build to it, and then how like low it. Uh, how low it performed like hey, what we were sold on isn't necessarily what we got uh, uh, at, least, at least to me maybe, maybe I'm alone in that maybe maybe I'm tripping but but, um, but I feel like it could have been uh, it should have been a bit better but yeah so I might have to go with the main event on that right, but nevertheless thank you all so much for watching I hope you enjoyed uh, if you did please do me a favor like comment subscribe share with your friends turn on post notifications so you know every time I upload a video so you can see as soon as it drops and let me know in the comments what your thoughts on uh, on this review Ooh, and uh, and on Stand and Deliver as a whole, did you enjoy Stand and Deliver this year? And as I've said for now the hundredth time in this video, uh, my WrestleMania 40 review will be coming out tomorrow. So stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned, I should say, for that. And we will kind of delve into what happened on the Raw after WrestleMania. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.